Hey, you want to be careful about accusing your political opponents of criminality, and you don't want them to accuse you of the same easily because we don't want to criminalize political disagreements. That's what I say whenever people say we should get Trudeau for treason. I said, well, first of all, I don't think he's actually committed treason. He's done some atrocious things, and who knows? Maybe there will be some revelations in his secret deals with the Chinese Communist Party. He's certainly trying to stop those facts from coming out, but we do not want to too easily criminalize a difference of opinion. First of all, we want to have a freewheeling political public square. And second of all, don't think for a second that it wouldn't be weaponized against our side first, because the other side has no compunction about these things. They don't play by the Marcus of Queensbury rules. I look at the legal troubles of Donald Trump and I compare them to the absolute immunity by the Democrats. Here's Hillary Clinton, who tweeted this photo of herself the other day wearing a hat that said, but her emails a reference to the illegal storage and use of a private email address on a private email server, and then deleting tens of thousands of those contrary to the law. Do you think she was charged, detained, searched, fingerprinted, any of that? Of course not. And she's so confident that she won't be. She'll literally have a taunting ball cap pointing out her immunity. Well, not so Donald Trump. And joining us now to talk about his legis, latest legal travails is our friend Ben Weingarten, the senior contributor for thefederalist.com. Ben, great to see you again. I, um, I'm trying to understand if these charges against Donald Trump are just more noise like the last 200 allegations against him, or if there's something qualitatively different about these because it's the legal system as opposed to just journalistic and political hatchet jobs. Can you give our viewers, especially those of us up here in Canada who maybe aren't following it super closely, what exactly is going on with Donald Trump and the courts these days? Well, this federal indictment is qualitatively and frankly, quantitatively different from anything that we've seen in American history. And as you noted, the use of the legal system to criminalize political dissent, uh, certainly something that has no place in a free country, in a free society, and certainly something that is relatively anathema when you look at American political and legal history. Now we have the first federal prosecution of a president, an indictment of a former president and leading nom a candidate for the Republican presidential nomination in 2024. And the charges are very serious. And if you take all the counts and the years associated with them together, you're talking about potentially hundreds of years behind bars. So that is qualitatively and quantitatively different from what we've seen before. This case, however, is consistent with what we've seen before in the sense that it represents the height of the weaponization and hyper-politicization of the national security and law enforcement apparatus and can be seen as one act of a running tragedy for America and for the free world in which there have been efforts to sabotage and subvert, quote unquote, our democracy, but really to undermine our republic, first beginning with Russiagate which sought effectively to halt the peaceful transfer of power to President Trump, then continuing with Ukraine Gate and the exploitation of January 6th, and continuing with a slew of frivolous suits now to this one. But again, this is, this is different because these are uh, Espionage Act charges, which not to get too into the weeds, but there's a very strong, I believe, case to be made that that's wholly inapt, that this case should have been, if it was going to be brought, that the relevant statutes would have been the Presidential Records Act. And then on top of that, there's uh, obstruction case of a, a non-crime, I would argue, layered on top. And you know, this is something that is meaningful for many reasons beyond being clear election interference and you know this arising at the very same time that Joe Biden faces charges of alleged, allegedly taking a bribe and massive revelations about his family's own dubious dealings, influence peddling, potentially criminal influence peddling with America's worst adversaries that could have really compromised national security. But beyond that, what this reflects is essentially a bureaucratic squabble and uh, unhinged bureaucrats launching a case against the president, which was a fishing expedition on grounds we've never seen before applied 
with very odd machinations as well, given that this investigation and the grand jury originally and many of the major decisions leading to this indictment were made in a D.C. venue, which would be favorable to the DOJ, not in Florida, where the case is ultimately going to be heard. So there are many in the weeds aspects of this, but I think at the highest level, we've never seen a prosecution brought like this, an investigation executed the way this investigation was executed, and a president be held not just treated unequally, but below the law. And you mentioned Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton was a secretary of state dealing in such information. This is a president, and a president does have different powers from any other government officer as a commander in chief when it comes to being able to retain documents, access documents, share documents, et cetera. So no one has ever been treated as far below the law, I would argue, as Donald Trump has been at such a senior position in the government, the senior most position in the federal government. That was an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. I'm Ezra Levant. Every weekday I do a monologue about the topic of the day. Then I interview a fascinating guest either in studio or via Skype. And then I read your mail, whether it's fan mail or hate mail, which is sometimes even more interesting. This is on our premium service, though, called Rebel News Plus. Go to rebelnewsplus.com. It's eight bucks a month or less if you buy a whole year in advance. You get my show every weeknight, plus Sheila Gunn Reed's show every week. It's called The Gun Show. It's pretty amazing. You know, we rely on you because we do not take a dime from the government. In Canada, that makes us almost unique. So please help us out and help yourself to some great journalism at rebelnewsplus.com.